Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of making a whetstone grinder for sharpening some of my tools. If you haven't seen the first part yet, I'd recommend that you do, but if you have seen it, you remember that we left off the first video with the frame, the motor and gearbox all being put together and running. So I think the next logical move will be to get a grinding wheel put on it, and then we can work out the spacings for the guides and the tool rest. Now unsurprisingly, since I haven't used one of these grinders before, I'm not really in the know for what types of stones that you put on them, but thankfully Tormek have a pretty good guide on their website, sort of listing the pros and cons of the various stones that you can buy. And looking at it, I probably could have used an aluminium oxide wheel, similar to the one that I have for the bench grinder, on one of these. But instead, I've chosen to go with a silicon carbide wheel, you know, they're about the same price as aluminium oxide. I picked this one up for about 30 bucks, but it has the advantage of being a harder material. That's going to be pretty good when it comes to sharpening all my high speed steel tools, you know, that being the lathe tools and my drill bits. But it's also going to be good because I can now sharpen my brazed carbide tooling. I never used my brazed carbide tooling, but at least I can now sharpen them and also never use them. So I guess at least for the moment, I'm going to be sticking with silicon carbide. Okay, so that's unfortunately not what I was hoping for. I can definitely tolerate some run out, but that is pretty far out of whack. But I'm pretty sure I know where most of the error is coming from. If I slow down the shaft and I look at it with a proper test indicator, we're getting, I don't know, 30, maybe 40 microns of run out on the end of the shaft. That's a bit disappointing, but it is what it is. I think partially that's going to be the spacing between the bearings and the bushings and also partially because as I mentioned in the previous video the shaft that I was using wasn't perfectly round. However that is not enough to explain the serious amount of run out that we're getting here. Now as it turns out what is doing most of that is the plastic washer that I made up which seems to be deforming when I tighten the nut and just throwing it out of whack. So the fix for that was pretty easy. I simply replaced it with a metal one from a bench grinder and that fixed most of the side to side wobble. The rest of the run out seems to be coming from the fact that the bore for the stone isn't properly centered. So that'll have to be chewed up at a later stage. It's certainly not uncommon, you know, I've run into this before, but it is a bit disappointing. But we can fix that later because what I want to do now, since I have the wheel in place, is to add the guides for the grinding jig. Now, if you're not too familiar with these types of machines, you should know that the guides for sharpening the tools are a little bit different to what you may find on a bench grinder. And that's because the goal here is to lock whatever you're sharpening in a jig and lock it at a particular angle. And that should get you a more consistent and even grind. So what I'm gonna do here is I'll start off with a block of aluminium, which I'll square up on the mill. I'll then get it on its side where I'll get a 16 mm hole drilled through it. Now the hole was drilled pretty close to size, but I did follow it up with a hand reamer. And finally, I'll drill and tap two holes on the bottom so I can screw it into place. Now the block is gonna be bolted directly to the top of the housing, so I need to get two holes drilled to allow for the screws to hold everything together.
Now to go through it, I have some 60 millimeter aluminum rod and I can simply cut that to length and glue it in place. And whilst the glue dries, I'll make up a jig for sharpening the chisels and the blade for the planer. When it comes to this type of grinder, if I want to sharpen, say, knives, I am going to have to make up a slightly different jig. So once again, we'll start off by cleaning up a block of aluminium and getting a 60mm hole drilled and reamed. This time, however, I'm going to machine a slot on the top side. This is going to help locate and square up the blade as I put it in the jig. Doing it this way means I can be pretty certain that it's going to be ground square. I'll now chew up an offcut of aluminium and then drill two holes to match up with those two tapped holes which I drilled previously. The guide now slides very nicely onto the rail and has a pretty good fit. I'll now get the blade in the jig and square it up. And finally, we can get the top plate screwed down, which will hold everything in place. And naturally, we can set the angle that we're trying to grind by changing the stick out on the blade. With that now done, we can now make the water tub for the stone to sit in. And realistically, we only need the bottom quarter or so of the stone to actually be sitting in the water itself. And obviously, this is going to be a perfect job for sheet metal. So what I'll do is I'll draw up a pattern and score the bend lines and cut out the rest. Okay, it's certainly not the most beautiful TIG welding in the world, but that'll definitely be watertight. With the tub now made, I now need a way of holding the tub in place without having to remove the wheel in order to remove the tub. The good thing is though, it doesn't need to be rigidly held in place, so I can easily make up some hooks to locate into the holes which I drilled, and I can simply hang the tub off the hooks. And I think I can simply cut down these wall hooks and make them work here.
And like so, the tub now very easily comes off and then obviously locks back in place. And I can do all that without having to remove the grinding wheel. And whilst I have the sheet metal already out, I'll make up the cover for the front and back of the housing. And when the cover's now made, I'll drill a hole in the front, and that's going to be for the on-off switch. I'm choosing to go with a very simple on-off switch, but if you really wanted to, you could go for a reversing switch. But I think, you know, at least for me, I'm only going to need this to spin in one direction, so a simple on-off switch is going to be perfectly fine. Now whilst I leave the parts to dry, I'm going to make up the honing wheel to go on the other side of the grinder. Now these are usually made of leather, or they have leather glue to them, you know, and you can pick them up for about 100, 120 bucks, which is fine, but I've heard that MDF can also work as a good substitute. Now I'm sure MDF isn't going to work as well as leather, but it's going to probably come down to how much you expect to use this. I'm only expecting to use this occasionally, but if you're using woodworking tools and you're using them often, I'd probably recommend going for leather rather than MDF. Also, because I drilled that center bore by hand, there's going to be a little bit of wobble. All right, and I guess that is the grinder mostly complete. I don't really have much to compare this to, so I suggest we get straight into testing it and see what it can do. I've set up the blade for the planer to cut the angle that I want, so let's turn it on and get that angle cut. Now I gave this a few minutes just to test it out, and so far I'm pretty happy with it. It's not bogging down too much, and I can apply a fair amount of pressure, so at least as far as the motor is going, it seems to be going just fine. And once I could see the burr develop, it was time to hone it. Now I'm going to be using some white metal polish on the hone to help us get that sharp edge. And I'm also going to be freehanding it. I debated extending the guide rail to the other side. You know, some designs do do that, some don't. But I just settled on doing it by hand and by feel, and at least for what it's worth, 
I seem to be getting some pretty good results out of it. Speaking of results, even though it's not really at the correct angle, that blade is now sharp enough to slice through hair. And given it was the first time of me using this machine and me going in practically blind, I think this is a really good result. And getting it back in the plane and starting to plane down some wood, the results that I'm getting are really night and day. The cut that it's taking is taking less force, it's producing larger and longer chips, and the surface finish that I'm getting out of the plane is a lot better than I was getting before. I'm sure there are ways of improving this. You know, the stone that I'm using is a little bit low grit for what I'm trying to achieve here, but so far, I'm really happy. Next, let's try a knife. This one here is completely blunt. You know, this one only cost me a few bucks, so I wasn't expecting much from it, but let's see what we can do. As I said before, the stone that I'm using is a bit coarse for knives, but in the end, it still did a fantastic job. It's not razor blade sharp, but it's definitely getting close. Now, some people were interested in the longevity, or I guess durability of the worm setup that I have here. So over the past two weeks, I've sharpened pretty much every high speed steel tool that I have. You know, that ranges from chisels to drills to the lathe tools that I have. And in doing so, I put a fair few hours into this machine. I've been getting some really good results out of a lot of the tools that I wasn't going to bother sharpening, at least anytime soon. Especially the chisels and the lathe tools. And so far, I haven't seen any change, or at least signs of wear in the gear. I'm pretty sure that if I keep it greased up like I have now, I can expect it to last quite a long time. I've also added a pin in the worm gear to keep it in place. The glue was working quite well, but this should cover me when the glue decides to stop working. I've also measured the load that I'm drawing, just to see what sort of power it's taking to drive this machine. Now, without any load on the grinder, it's taking about one amp at 12 volts to run this thing. And under a normal load, I need about two or three amps of power to run it. It's also producing very little heat in the process. You know, being a sealed unit, I was wondering about the heat build up inside of it, but even after an hour or so of use, the housing still remained quite cool. The water bath is also doing a great job at collecting all the grit and dust. You know, the main reason why I don't like to use silicon carbide wheels is the dust. You know, there's a range of hazards associated with using it, or at least breathing it in, more so than with your normal aluminium oxide, which you also wouldn't want to breathe in either. But the point is, silicon carbide isn't something that you want to breathe in. But the good thing here is all the dust is collected and it forms a sludge at the bottom of the pan, which I can very easily dispose of. The final thing I want to do is true up that wheel because I'm still very unhappy with the amount of run out. Now they do make special tools and jigs to help you do this, but I simply clamped a 123 block as a sort of backrest, and then I clamped in one of those diamond dressing bits into the jig. I can then start to advance the tool, and it will very slowly start to remove the high spots until the stone is perfectly trued up. And it certainly took a while, but we did get there in the end. All right, so I think we can just about leave it here. I hope you enjoyed this build series. I know I certainly did. And I'm now left over with a very nice sander at the end, something that I've wanted for a very long time. Now, is it better than a Tormek? You know, probably not, but I also didn't pay $1,000 plus for it. You know, in total, this was about $80 all up and a few weekends to get it all put together. 
For the occasional use, which I'm expecting from this, I think this is going to work just fine. You know, obviously, I just couldn't justify the price of the Tormek, so at least for me, I'm very happy with it. I think the only change that I'd make to it sometime in the future would be to get a proper honing wheel, or maybe even a diamond wheel. But at least for me, I can worry about that in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next week.